It's the fourth Alexia meetup. Amazing um, to have it again. Thanks for engineers to, for recording this session. Um, just some logistics. Downstairs is a fridge. There's some beer, water, and soft drinks. I think Coke Zero. A bit short on supplies at the moment, but yeah. There's also a wine tasting next to the door. <laughs> but it's not included. <laughs> and the toilets are just the stairs down and straight ahead. And then you see the toilets just in case the elixir is too much. Um, yeah, I'm Christian. I'm the host of tonight. And also Craig helped me organizing it. Thank you so much for kicking this off. Um, yeah, I'd like to give you an overview of what happened in Europe in May 12, I think. There was the Alexi conference in Europe for the second time. And I want to report how it was and share the interesting things that happened there. And then, um, yeah, we tried something new. Um, if you have some code that doesn't compile, for example, or you have a question around this, <laughs> we can share it here on, on the screen and then talk about it and solve your issues, hopefully. Also share some best practices and so on. And yeah. We can't see through. Oh. <laughs> Technology, how does it work? Yeah. <laughs> I have to make a confession again. I did it in the first Elixir meetup and I do it today in the fourth meetup and I'm still very new to Elixir. I just stumbled around this. Um, Dave Thomas from Prague Proc video, and he was so amazed about this, and uh, he elaborated how he fell in love with Alexia, and I said, okay, if this man is excited around it, uh, I have a look at it. And I created the meetups to gather some amazing people around this topic, and there are always amazing people in Singapore also. And yeah, with that background, um, no production running code, um, no real Alexia coding experience, but some is called, okay, but it was it's very much to improve, I would say. I went to Germany and was like, oh, let's see what the pros are doing, and let's, let's see what's happening. Good news is that the next uh, European Alexia conference is um, happening in <coughs> Barcelona in Spain. Really looking forward for this. A nice place to visit. I've got a question. How is it chosen? Who decides about the next place? Uh, the Oracle. I don't know. Okay. <coughs> Europe, the European Ruby Conference had a nice tradition that there were a few groups that wanted to organize the next conference and the participants were voting. Ah. Which, which place would be the next one? Yes. Maybe they, they said oh, they had a, a, a final closing keynote. Mm -hmm. They made a question okay, where do you want to see the next Alexia Conf in Europe? And it starts with B, and everybody was okay, Berlin again, because it's a great venue, actually. And then it's Barcelona. So it's also nice. It's a very vibrant city, I've heard. Looking forward to it. So with very basic Alexia skills, um, more excitement than knowledge, I went to Berlin, and I was like, okay, let's see what's happening. So there's a room, I don't, I don't know, actually, hundreds of people full, fully booked, it seems, and very friendly folks, uh, very nice food, I gained a lot of weight, and <laughs> met the master, uh, Jose, and had this very short talk, and he actually, I tried to ask him if he would like to come to visit us in, in Singapore, and he said, yeah, he likes Singapore, and he's open for that, maybe, uh, if you hear that, <laughs> would love to have you here, it was nice, and I brought some stickers, yeah, and... <laughs> <laughs> Here are some stickers. Um, thank you for giving me these. I really um, negotiated with the organizers because it's the last batch they had. And I said, I bring it to Singapore and I promise I spread it in the meetup. So here they are. <laughs> thank you. Do you want to keep them? Please uh, spread the love. <laughs> this is very important. Okay. The things I really enjoyed was to talk about Credo. If you don't know about Credo and you're still new to Alexia, I really recommend to have a look at it. It um, started as a static code analyzer, like uh, CheckStyle, if you come from Java. 
And René was giving a talk around this, and he was elaborating on the philosophy, what a real code analyzer should do, in his opinion. And I really liked his approach, because it should be a learning tool also. And that's what he tries to implement. He has some categories and gives you real human-friendly hints on the code it analyzed. So if you're new to, to Alexia, or even if you think you can really code Alexia, have a look. I think you get a lot of benefit from this tool. It's available as Hex, like an easy-to-install package. And it can be a mix command then, like a mix credo. And you get some nice overview of what things can be maybe improved. What also was great to see um, is who's using Alexia. And I was actually amazed that so many people showed up. I was exper expecting more smaller conference, but it was a huge hall and a full hall, actually. And there were a lot of conversations going on and so on. So this credo how does work? Like when you compile the code, it gives the warnings? Or can you use it also so that when you save the file, it already scans it? You can use it, uh, for example, as a hook, of course, and then you get the report, probably. OK. It's very highly configurable, and mm -hmm. you can in introduce it to your um, workflow, like a CI, for example, to check code style first. Mm -hmm. I have a report. I, I show you a screenshot around this tool. Okay. You can also try it out later on your code, for example. Oh, <laughs> it's very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> it um, compared to others to other check style, for example, uh, it doesn't hurt feelings. It's really supportive. Just you, okay, do you think you want to do this because it tends to go in this direction? Okay. Are you, it's really communicative, like mm -hmm. it's really helpful and uh, focuses on teaching. And check style is more like white space not correct on line 20. And this repeats 20 times because you always have to white space wrong. Very useful in a way, but not really teaching me something. And also, of course, what was nice to hear uh, from Jose and Chris McCord, uh, what's going on in the future, was planned. And they were talking about things like broker or a gen broker and all of that crazy concepts they have. And they implemented, implemented actually, by accident, they mentioned it, which was blowing my, my mind as well. Yeah, OK, that's really cool. <laughs> Where can I use it? I don't know yet. So um, more from a consultant side and, and seeing things moving in this direction is, is amazing, actually. So this is Credo in action. It's a bit blur. Maybe we can fix this. Can we? No, we cannot. So it's more like uh, the categories I mentioned. It's the code readability. Like um, you should add the documentation for your module, for example. Refactoring opportunities. It's not error. It's more like, hey, you could improve here. And yeah, please have a look. Warnings. There seems to be something really wrong, and it, there's a better way to do this. And, uh, how do you configure it? Do you have some configuration file? Because it's yes. like the max size of the function is 30, so yeah. you have a file, right? That's totally. Okay. It's like a check style, mm -hmm. and compared with that, it's not really fair because it's much more advanced from what I'm, I see. There's a configuration file also per project, <coughs> and you can have it's super specific. Uh, you can also ignore issues if you like. Can you do uh, automatic uh, fix? Hmm? Automatic fix? Ah, yeah. This, that was a question actually from the audit yes. auditorium. Yeah. Is there, yeah, is there a way to auto fix my issues? <laughs> um, it gives recommendations, right? Uh, no, no, I can. Can really fix? Can really fix? Second time, then it fixes the issues it made. No. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was mentioned that it's a nice idea, but it's um, the, the way it's implemented. It's very difficult actually to auto fix code. But he gives um, recommendations, and he was thinking about this. And he mentioned that he's looking for a sponsor for this. And if people are interested in that feature, we can think about this together. 
So he was not totally, no, no, this is impossible, but it's more like, hmm, we can do this, we can plan this for the future, as a future feature, yes. Technically it's possible, but it's not yet implemented. Yeah, a lot of uh, sponsors uh, supporting the conference, uh, people talking about running it in production also. There were a lot of game companies. Uh, Alexia, if you're very new to Alexia, it's very a nice implementation, or Erlang actually, of the actor-based model, like the actor pattern. And I think about it as a, um, it's our picture, it's like, I have a, um, an online character and this is the model and this is talking to other models that it meets in the online world and then they communicate through messages. And this is actually how Alexio Erlang is, I think, uh, that's a concept, a core concept of Erlang, that uh, there are processes talking to each other through messages and there's no shared um, state. This was very exciting to see that the, uh, the games are using this in, Banks and FinTech are using it ads and monitoring like uh, log analyzers, um, IoT robots. The, um, the Nerf project was mentioned. The Nerf project is hacking hardware with Erlang or Alexia. So you have, we saw a robot moving with Alexia, like doing things and reacting to the outside world by playing some instruments. And it was actually very funny. So if you're into IoT, Internet of Things, um, Erlang can also be for you, or Alexia. And of course, telecommunication, Telco. They used Erlang, now they're getting into this um, new Alexia mood, and yeah, it was very interesting to see. There's a list uh, of... Any example? Hmm? Any example Saying uh, telecom companies are using Elixir, or no? I think they're using Erlang. Like they're, using Erlang. they're coming from Erlang. The so, or, yeah. They're coming from Erlang now. They get excited about Elixir because they see our oh, developers, the community is much more vibrant. We talked about this in the introduction, so more context for the online auditorium. Um, um, Ericsson didn't make a big fuss around Erlang. It was invented to solve a problem at Ericsson, but they didn't put a lot of marketing efforts. Like, it worked for them, and that's, if people want to use it out, outside of um, Ericsson, they seem to be okay. Compare that to Sun, for example, which pushed the Java. We should blame Ericsson for the current state. <laughs> <laughs> blame? They blame Ericsson. If they pushed a bit more, maybe Java wasn't. Who's to blame? Okay. Really? In the 80s. Oh, okay. Yeah, I also heard that they didn't really want to spread it. So there's a list of um, companies that use Alexi obviously in production. Nice read. Do they accept pull requests? Is it like a. It's, it's a good repository, so... Okay, yeah. It's the first thing I found um, doing a Google search. Maybe there are yes. some more official resources. I don't know. Doomspock, I don't know. <laughs> um, no offense. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's an official resource, but it, it was a very elaborate yeah, sure. list of, of resources. The nice thing I, I like to mention, and I'll do that later in the slide, is that, um, yeah, Ericsson helped a lot of other things to, to make it happen, like CouchyBees based on Erlang, for example. CouchyBees is a um, key value store, like a NoSQL database, and it was used by um, CERN, like a European, like, how do you call it in English? Like, uh, they smash atoms and then they find new elements. Thank you. And then they used the, the Erlang database, like, based on Erlang, uh, to find new elements and that, that it's, it's interesting to, to get into this Erlang world in my opinion because it opens so much more than just a language. It's a mindset maybe. RabbitMQ is probably Yes, RabbitMQ, React. So, um, ah, this is the scaling. There's a nice um, slide share presentation why I love Alexia. There's a link actually on the bottom and this is the 
the table um, I really like to highlight because I also come from a DevOps perspective and I feel that the pains with Java applications, for example, or Ruby every day. It, it's okay, but it's more like the overhead in, in quotes you need for the tr traditional um, languages and, and like approaches, I would say, is significant more than, than having everything with Erlang. I'm not saying that Erlang solves everything magically, but it's more like it can handle a lot of things we try to uh, solve with add-ons like uh, load balancer or monitoring for the processes. It has everything inside already. The language has these concepts that we reinvented for traditional languages. This is pretty amazing and I like to explore this actually more in the future. Um, this gives a nice overview of what I'm trying to say. Like, um, you can run the, the, the Phoenix, for example, the Phoenix web framework runs out of the box better than a traditional Rails application with caching. It was a metric they showed on the conference. It was uh, mind blowing. And one thing we recognized when installing the Phoenix, um, Phoenix web framework that there's a strange um, symbol like the mu, like microseconds. I have to get I have to get used to this actually because I never saw it before in, 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 the, in the terminal. It's so fast, it's faster than microseconds which is the normal measurement. It's so fast that yeah, this symbol comes, <laughs> uh, come, will be displayed most of the time. Yeah, this is the side note that I learned so much on my journey to, to Berlin and back. Also, from this wonderful article on pragmatic programmers um, from the inventor himself. And then I realized, okay, I was always asking myself, what, where's Erlang? I don't see it in production. There's nobody really buzzing around and saying, I'm using Erlang in production. It's already used in the LTE and, and CG. Uh, network we're using every day when, when doing the connections. And this is like, oh, it's like, okay. I cannot imagine, actually. And he's quoting, this is some, some years ago, I think, that article, but he's quoting the 40% of the world's data communication is running on, on these networks, written in Erlang. Quite impressive. I also lost my fear about Erlang. Not Alexi, also Alexi, but Erlang itself, because... Um, I heard about Erlang, I don't know, around 2000 um, by somebody who was really excited about it and he showed some code and I was like, no, can, <laughs> it doesn't work in my brain, I don't know why. But now revisiting this, it's actually very compact. The code is very small and we can get instant um, benefit. And I actually understood the pattern matching here. So this is actually Erlang code. We define a geometry module and we export a function. And we have some patterns that we want to match. Like we want a rectangle area function which calculates the area from the width and <coughs> the height. Or we want to have the square and so on. Like to get the, you get the idea, right? This is like P and then having the area for. These tricky questions. <laughs> I don't know. I know that it compiles. <laughs> I tested it. <laughs> Does anyone else? That's a good question. Then. Um, isn't it that the dot is the, the variable name? Then? Something like this? I think the dot is the, the regular like, um, line in here where you would normally use a semicolon. I actually thought that that was always the case. Mm -hmm. This is a script. Yes, but in the file. function, like, at the end of one function, you've got semicolon, right? Yeah. And at the end of the last function, you've got dot. Yeah, to send it for you. Okay, so I could use the dot in, in the end of other functions as well? No, I don't think so, because they're all supposed to be evaluated as a single exactly. function. So maybe, patterns, exactly, right? maybe this, this, because it's one function with just a few different signatures, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe yes. I need to use semicolon when I want to have 
the same function here. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not sure. And another question I thought uh, I have is like, what is the circle or square there? Is it like because it doesn't look like a string? It doesn't oh, look like a symbol. I actually I know this one. They're, they're basically the equivalent of a um, an atom. Yeah. yeah. So anything with a lowercase is an atom, and oh. all variables have an uppercase. Yes. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> so like that. <laughs> Thank simple. you. Like, yes. And, okay. Uh, simple but confusing at yeah, first. <laughs> yes. Look at it. Well, is it again like convention over a configuration thing? Like, like it, it follows convention. I guess you said uh, yeah. that, 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 that anything starts with lowercase is uh, it's item. But I mean that must actually be understood by the compiler. Yeah, so it's not, not convention anymore. Convention. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No, I'm talking about the uppercase and lowercase of the parameters. Oh, so yeah. it makes a difference. The, the lowercase, it makes it a, a kind of. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an atom. So it, it, we want to match it. So we want to have, this is something I really had to get used to, to use the same uh, method name again for something else. <laughs> it's like, okay, interesting. So what, what's happening here is that we have the same function to get to an area for rectangles, squares, and cycle. And with different parameters even. And we want to match, uh, for example, the square and um, allow one parameter that we use to multiply with it each, each, itself, right? So this is the call, and it used then uh, the pattern match for this, and used uh, the R to get the result back. So this made a click in my, my brain. It's like very simple to write and to reason about, actually. And yeah, it works, obviously. So uh, we can try this later also. So this example shows a much better model uh, than the uh, object-oriented uh, model. So I just don't hear about Erlang and got more annoyed by Java. This is how it would look in Java, actually. <coughs> you have to compile it then also, and yeah, it's not fitting on one page. Just as a side note, <coughs> no trolling intended. Yeah. Do you write Java at work? What's that? Do you write Java at work? That's what I, works. I, um, okay, yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. I try to avoid it. <laughs> okay. Officially. <laughs> but even you hire your uh, square from right now. What do you mean? You did it, right? You didn't you hire, uh, extend your uh, square from rectangle. This is code from, from um, the official blog post. I didn't write it necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's the tricky part. <laughs> I didn't even want to compile this. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 okay. it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's good code, but uh, if you uh, inherit uh, square from rectangle, you will have more, more, more trouble. Okay. So the multiple inheritance. A joke from from Alexey Confess. What's worse than inheritance? Yeah. Multiple inheritance. Okay. <laughs> There's a very funny talk about uh, OOP. In, in, like yes. OOP in in Alexia. Uh -huh. We can watch it later for, to 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 have some fun about OOP. As I said, uh, what's coming up in Alexia? Um, many nice improvements that look promising. <coughs> Again, I'm not so deep into the programming language, but uh, it made all sense to me. <coughs> so there's some, a nice summary of the features here, and there are also um, talks on this from Jose and, and so on in more detail, so I don't want to bore you with that at the moment, but it's great future <laughs> awaits us. My dear friends, <laughs> it's, um, it was very intense and interesting to, to challenge my brain thinking in this, these terms and I think there's a bright future. And thank you so much and questions. Thank you for the end of the that 
Das ist der? Ja, der Feature ist der. Okay, okay. Ich werde dich zeigen. Das Sleep hat einen Parameter. Ja, du kannst auch schlafen, ja. Das ist mit der Take a Parameter. Duration Number. Ja, das ist alles. It's, uh, we can go through the blog post. Um, the date, a, the date, the calendar types made sense to me because I tried to do some calendar program in the past and it's... Uh, but will it replace the need for the Timex library? Like that library yes. will be, yes? So it will keep Eventually. the same and sort of, more. So it gives it a uh, basics. They were actually, he was talking with Timex and another date library. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So he's hoping that it will be, okay. become the common um, struct across all the day libraries, but it's just going to provide basic functionality, and then the other libraries can still add functionality on top of these. Okay, so, so it will not give 100% functionality of the libraries, just the no, basics. No, I don't think okay, so. Okay, So it. he's kind of just trying to address the the whole like when you deal with a lot of dates, it's like you convert to the Erlang mm -hmm. standard and then back and all this kind of stuff to match all the different frameworks so we've yeah. got a standard struct to deal with. Yeah. But yeah. the functionality is pretty basic. Yeah, it's like you are dealing with Ecto, Ecto has its own data. data yes, size. yes, so I know. Use time is different and use calendar is different. There was a question, uh, finally was mentioned again, um, how about the libraries on uh, LNC and then any libraries on How do I use libraries actually? Is that community or is that? I think the community is growing massively. There's hex um, as a standard packaging and also the rebar suite coming from Erlang. You can use both, you can interchange, like you use Erlang libraries in Alexia and Alexia is Erlang as well. Yeah. Basically it's, it's compiled to the same. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Is, I, I, don't know about, I don't know about it. Like Erlang using Elixir stuff, but I assume so. I just don't know how that works. So you can use uh, very solid libraries coming from Erlang in your applications. And I think to, to note actually is it's also again a mind shift, from, at least for me, is that uh, when a, an Erlang library is, hasn't been changed for 10 years, it's considered stable. <laughs> the mix file when you add dependencies if there is some syntax for fetching the Erlang libraries because I normally use just like Erlang library but I need to provide the github URL mm. to fetch it so I, I don't know mix the package management uh, yes so I use in mix yeah this is the package manager and I add the uh, I add dependencies but when I add the dependency that is in elixir I just provide the name of the library right because then it fetches it from hex But when I provide the Erlang, because I use some Erlang libraries, I can't just provide the name of the library, I need to provide the GitHub URL as well. I think some Erlang libraries aren't in Hex. Oh yes, okay. Yeah, so it's, just, it's up to the Erlang library whether it's in Hex or not. Right? Yes, 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 yeah, absolutely. No, I just think that uh, the question is if, there, if it's available on the rebar, I can use it or not. I, I don't think so, yeah, that's... A, that's yeah. Okay, so that's that's cool. I think that, uh, So you can use it. Yeah, because when I up, when I have like I fetch the library that is in Elixir, then I see like I get a message that is outdated, that it has some new version, etc. But when I'm using the one from Erlang, I have no idea. I'm just fetching the one that I specified in the dependency because I need to provide URL and the, the version. And the only way to check if there is a new version is just go to that repository on GitHub and see if there is something new. Yeah. And so I guess that's one of the problems still to be solved. First issue. <laughs> can push the hex. Yeah. <laughs> it probably helps now that they're like supporting Rebar. Oh yeah. So it supports. Okay. It support. Here Slice you also mentioned make. What does it mean? Is it make file or what? It is a minus minus command. C command. Make file. Little details. Uh, I'd love to show you the top post. Right? 
really I didn't get my hands dirty on this yet. So I apologize. Bye. Please give me a project back and invite Alex or I want to go. It's all right, please. You're welcome. Yeah. We are hiring. <laughs> 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 So yeah, there's a lot of details to read, so I'll mm -hmm. keep that for post meetup because so it needs more consideration from your side. Okay, so it will just execute the make the, using make file and will compile some code for you when you need I don't know C extensions or yeah. something like this. Okay. What about this uh, X unit div? Can you go to that section? I'm curious about it. Sure. Ah, this is oh, again this is, this is very nice actually, it reminds me. I don't know, um, <coughs> Credo is about teaching Ella, Ella <coughs> Elixir um, output of the error messages, compiler error messages, and also the test. The results um, are very much to teach you on the spot the errors faster and also if you're familiar with Elm compiling with your very useful um, hints where to search and what you could probably fix to resolve the issue. So we, what I saw very strongly is that people seem to rediscover that computers can actually be helpful for us instead of throwing stack trays where we have to search for the things that they give us the opportunity to learn, so there was one great quote, every error message is an interaction with the user and a, a chance to improve the knowledge on something. It's like a uh, uh, phrase now, but um, it's this enlightened ah, you can actually you think about the user that programs our language and help him to write better code. I think that yeah, it's astounding. This is the only language where I feel this strong cry from this direction. Correct me if I'm wrong in Java, I don't feel so much. Yeah. Sorry, I said, I said, yeah, Java, I can about Java, so like, this is what I am close to every day. But mm -hmm. Do you see that in other languages like um, Ruby? It's also, bam, there's a stack trace. Here you have it. And then I have to figure out why it failed. This is very depressing. Bundler failed because of a huge stack trace. Mm -hmm. If you get a bit of knowledge to understand why mm -hmm. and this happens. Is and there a new, pic new picture of a ah. new version? To get back to the... the Just go down to the 1.3, that's the old format. Yes. <coughs> Compare that and then you can see oh. the left hand side. And mm -hmm. this <coughs> actually, this is the, the spot you want to improve. Here. Okay. Oh. It is so cool. This idea has been around for many years. Yeah. So there was an idea called approval test. So the way you write a test is uh, you don't write a test, you just format everything into a string. Right. And then uh, uh, the first output, you check it and then you approve it. The next time, you, it will be checked against this uh, approved uh, version. Mm -hmm. The next time, if it's different, it will show you the difference. And uh, it can be a failure or you approve it again. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's nice, yeah. There's a lot of movement in, in this, make it more easy for the human to move. You mix tasks. Um, a, a very fundamental question, sorry. Uh, what, what is OTP? Uh, I'm very sorry. <laughs> What's o OTP? Oh, my question, transaction. Telecom for sure. Telecom protocol. Is it protocol? <laughs> Open telecom something. Open telecom. Basically, it's a set of libraries for concurrency and phone tolerance. Yes. It's basically the message system, right? So it's a concept. Oh, this is on video. It's an open telecom protocol and it means that there are some concepts um, It's a terrible name for the franchise. It's yeah, all yeah. uh -huh. It's not only for, like I said, it's coming to our normal web uh, frame, web context, right? It's not only in the router doing the authentication things. 
it's more like um, supervised processes. We start them and then they will um, spin up many processes and we start all of them and then they fail, for example, or only the ones that fail. Like it's more like it gives you more tools at hand to write fault tolerant code that was needed or required, like in the days for the telecom stack. But it's also very, very useful for our all on internet era now. So have you tried using like Gen Server or Agent in Elixir? No, I supervise you. Ah, okay, it. yeah. <laughs> so for me, it's always easier to explain that because people know what is Gen Server, they don't, they know what's Agent. And they say, okay, so this is part of OTP. Yes. So it's not. This is not. One time password. password. <laughs> yeah. it's not password. I, I want to say the urban dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is exactly what I got. This yeah. is all. Actually, I thought about the GPS. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know, in a you know, in a rotation, you just mentioned it as just very common so, term. <laughs> One time pairing, I'm pretty sure that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my mind, the way I sort of thought about it is uh, OTP is kind of like Java EE, whereas the early MLP is the JVM, so it's sort of like the encompassing. It's not, not, nothing to do with the JVM. Um, that would be the equivalent of being. Uh, yeah, yeah, the you know, like, yeah. Um, It's more like the Java threading framework. <laughs> Or like yes. Boost in C++, something like this, I would say. Like a set of libraries that without them, you can't really use the full power of the language. Mm -hmm. Like you can, you can write it on your own, of course. Oh, yeah. It is possible because it's written in Erlang, right? So. Mm -hmm. okay. The cool thing about Elixir is that it's written in Erlang by using macros. Like Erlang is more like a tool set for defining your own language. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it was more like, ah, Erlang is a bit <coughs> interesting, too interesting for me to, to write, so I want to make it beautiful and I have some more ideas. So I used actually Erlang concepts to define the language. <laughs> a nice resource for learning around OTP is that one, then you send Erlang on and it's open telecom platform. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do this? <laughs> It's okay, it's all over learning and it's very elaborated and interesting to read. I have to reread it actually, it reminds me um, yeah, how to make the fault tolerant applications. Yeah. And it also works very well with web applications. So when you spin up the Phoenix um, web framework, which is implemented in LXC, we already have OTP. We have a supervisor for the program, right? Like for processes. Yeah, gives you the framework for creating new processes and this how to manage them. <coughs> Very nice. Again, what we reinvent with other tools is implemented here in the language, in the core of the language. I find it very interesting. Like supervisors, process supervisors. It's kind of the whole point of using a mixer. Yeah. Or like, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And it's not an uh, operation process, it's a <coughs> VM, LM VM process, very light process. And again, bad naming, because they call it processes, and you've got Unix processes, and everyone confuses them. Yeah. How, how does it compare to Java? Is it, or the I just don't ask me. It's <laughs> 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 like a process. You get used to it. It's a framework. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of <coughs> bad namings. Yeah. Naming is one of the yeah. hardest problems in IT, I thought. Yeah, but like the technology is really good. I find the documentation of Erlang and Alexia very, very good. So it's also it's a first class citizen. Documentation is first. And it's very helpful for the developer and very conform. Yeah, I hope I could enlighten you and share some of the amazing things that happened in Germany. And that happened also in my plane because I'm seriously amazed by this. 
Are all the videos already out or will there be? Out? So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Like, you need to oh, check it. You are out then. You just search um, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah. Yes. Speakers, for example. Jose's keynote is really good. Um, he talks a lot about the new OTP style stuff that he's trying to introduce. Can you click on some presentation and see on the video a bit there? I'm really Oh yeah, there is already video. Cool. Oh, yes. Ah, you, are you interested in the OOP? Yeah, we are We want to share some code if you, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Can I play OOP? OOP. OOP. The video for OOP? The flash talk. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, excellent. I was confused with uh, OOP. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too, too many acronyms. <laughs> Where is it?